dobrodošli na Balkan UFO kanal. Danas odlazimo u Irsku i Dublin i govorit ćemo o ženi po imenu Marika Jali. Ženi koja tvrdi da je od svoje treće godine predmet proučavanja i eksperimentiranja misteriozne vanzemaljske vrste, vrste koja ima jasne planove za naš planet. Danas govorimo o ženi koja je dobila pravo da postavi dva pitanja. constantly screaming at night and I'd be hysterical. My parents didn't believe me basically. I was telling people this, I was telling my family, but you know, you're told, don't be silly, go to bed, there's nothing there. But um, I was seeing beings with, they were the beings with the long blonde hair and dressed in blue. There's five of them, there's always five of them, four men and one woman. Fenomen otmica je misteriozni nestanak tisuća i tisuća ljudi i djece diljem svijeta zabrinjavajući je trend koji u porastu zadnjih godina. Što se događa s tim ljudima i gdje većina takvih ljudi završi je misterija na koju možda za vas ima odgovor Marika Jali. Irkinja koja tvrdi da je predmet proučavanja misteriozne vanzemaljske vrste još od najranijeg detinstva kada se ova bića počela posjećivati dok je imala samo tri godine. Bića koja bi se pojavljivala usred noći za vrijeme sna i bića koja bi bez problema prolazila kroz same zidove. Možda vam ovo dijelo je samo kao noćna mora jedne djevojčice iz 60. godina prošlog stoljeća, kao što se činilo i njezini roditeljima, ali tko god je proučavao ovaj fenomen, svjestan je da je ovo uobičajena pojava. Većina ljudi koja se sjeća svojih posjeta i otmica prijavljuje istu stvar, raznorazna bića koja bez problema prolaze kroz čvrste strukture. Marika Jali je sada odrasla žena u 50. godinama sa rupama u sjećanju, misterioznim gubicima vremena od nekoliko sati pa sve do čitavih dana koja tvrdi da su se njezini kontakti nastavili kroz čitav život do dan danas. Sjećanja na određene susrete bi se znala iznena da pojaviti i nekoliko godina nakon što bi se dogodili i danas ćete imati priliku čuti njezin opis jednog od najzanimljivijih susreta jer kako kaže ona sama ne želi ove događaje nazivati otmicama jer ova navodna bića joj nisu ništa loše napravila. Ova bića koje je Marika Jale vidjela bi ponekad imala klasičan opis nordijskog tipa vanzemaljaca, poput pledijaca o kojima smo već govorili. Visoki muškarac je žena sa bijelom ili plavom kosom, dok je u drugim susretima opisivala humanoidna bića koja su izgledala kao čista energija zlatne boje. Iako nije sigurna, Marika Jale smatra da je riječ o istim bićima koje u svom prirodnom izvornom bliku izgledaju i djeluju kao čista energija. Čista energija dok opitavaju u svom svijetu, to je najjednostavnije moguće rešeno dok su u svojoj dimenziji. Dok spuštajući se u naš materijalni 3D svijet poprimaju oblik kakav god žele i kakav god im odgovara. U ovom slučaju humanoidni oblik jako sličan ljudima. Ova žena tvrdi da su joj još kao djevojčici 1963. godine iz ljeve noge izvadili nepoznati predmet, to je stimplant. Iako je još od najranije dobi govorila roditeljima i ljudima oko sebe, naravno nitko joj nije vjerovao i sve su pripisivali noćnim morama i dječjim fantazijama. 2010. godine iz čeljusti joj izvađen novi predmet i 2013. godine na UFO kongresu bila je pregledana od strane UFO istraživača Steve Colberna. O misteroznim predmetima i implantima pronačeni kod žrti i otmica sam puno detaljnije govorio o video o doktoru Rogeru Liru, koji je cijelu svoju karijeru posvetio ovakvim slučajima i ovakvim fenomenima, pa bacite oko ako zanima. Ono što je meni osobno bilo najzanimljivije kod izjava ove žene je događaj iz 1998. godine kada se prema njezini tvrdnjama našla u samoj vanzemaljskoj letjelici ili u nekakoj vrsti baze, jer sam prostor u kojem se nalazila je bio ogroman. Sam prostor nije toliko zanimljiv nego ono što se nalazilo u tom prostoru. I često znamo na kanalu raspravljati koliko ima istine u izjavama ovakvih ljudi. I u ovom konkretnom slučaju možemo se svi nadati da ovo što tvrdi ova žena nije istina. Jer ono što ćete uskoro čuti je izuzetno zabrinjavajuće. Poslušajte samo Marika Jali kako je opisala ovaj susret za vrijeme kojeg je dobila mogućnost da postavi dva pitanja ovim misteriznim bićima. Two standing behind me. I know there were two standing behind me. I could feel one here and one here, and they felt quite tall. They didn't feel small. I could feel the presence. I could feel them, and they were probably a foot or two taller than me. And um, when I was in this place, it was all white. All I could see, for just for as far as my eyes could see, were little plants, all in little pots. Thou millions of them, mil rows and rows and rows of plants going on for, you know. 
as far as I could see, you know, into the distance. So I don't know how big this place was or... Were they all kinds of different plants? No, they're all exactly the same. Oh, all right. exactly, all about a foot high, all exactly the same. And as I was looking down, I did see there were some little beings, but they weren't people or anything, or they're tiny little things like this, like mm. not much bigger than the plants, but really thin and like those tiny little like monkeys. Two, one, 18 inches or two feet tall, perhaps. Well, yeah. Is that yeah, about yeah. two foot? Yeah. Well, very, they, they just looked dark and I couldn't see features. They were just sort of mm. shadows mainly because mm. they were quite far away. I just saw them. They were small. And um, I just heard a voice in my head. And uh, I know it was the one on this side that spoke. And it was a man's voice in English, mm -hmm. I remember. And it, he just said, you can ask two questions. So, of course, I said, well, what's with all these plants here and what's going on? And the answer was, uh, these are for the new planet Earth. And that was all, nothing else. These are for the new planet Earth. And next of all, I remember carried on walking. I don't even remember if I was walking, because I don't remember a floor. I don't know if I was floating. Mm. But I remember, I mean, I wasn't in my, my right mind, because I know I would have asked a lot more questions yes. or looked yeah. around. But mm. it was either I was totally at ease and didn't need to ask, because I already know, or mm -hmm. they have you under some sort of control that you can't actually yes. ask. Yeah. I, I, re I think probably that's. So, did you find more yourself like going down by these plants, or did you go elsewhere in the ship? Or um, this we just carried on walking, and we walked this way, and the plants were sort of going that way. But I didn't, as I was walking down, we didn't pass the plants, so I assumed right. we went another direction. But it looked the same. It was still all white and still looked well, the same. When they, when they said to you about this, the new Earth, did that seem kind of normal? It seemed very you? normal to me. Right. I said, oh, okay. Right. You know, okay. that kind of, not like, well, uh, as, if you already, Earth, or, as if you already had information. Yeah, as, if, as, if, as I if I already, already knew, knew and it was totally yeah. acceptable and it's for yeah. the new Earth. And, oh, okay. Because I know in my right mind, I would have said, well, what's the new Earth? Tell me mm. more information. I want to know. I want yeah. to know. And I would have really asked, but you don't... Um, you can't no, do didn't, that. No, it didn't occur to you. You can't. Well, it's not that it doesn't occur to you. You can't. All right. It's like um, you, you can't speak, basically. Yeah. You can't interact the way you would normally on yes. a, a no yeah. realistic level mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. So either they have you under some sort of trance or hypnosis or you don't need to ask because you already mm -hmm. know everything. And it's yes, yes. So that, they're the two options that I'm yeah. left with. So I don't uh, know. And what one. about the second question? Second question, um, we carried on, and um, I just remember then there was people everywhere. But people were, they weren't like the rows of plants, they were in rows, long ways, like this. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how far they went up, I didn't look, but I just remember the people next to me, in front of me. Yes. And I have their faces embedded in my mind. I can describe what they were wearing, even. Again, would, these, would, would, they, would you call them human? Yeah, yeah, they were just yeah. like us. They were yeah. normal people. They were normal yeah. people, all wearing different clothes. Um, some were wearing, you know, long nighty kind of things. Maybe they were abductees, I don't know, but they were definitely humans. Mm -hmm. And none of them were talking. It was completely silent. And they were just all, they seemed to be just all standing there looking straight ahead. And as I came up closer to this, I remember the one lady, she had long hair and a long white sort of gown to probably about hair. I remember her distinctly because I was right next to her. And as I came up behind her, she, I saw she was looking at a screen. Uh -huh. This screen was just, I mean, it wasn't attached to anything. And you couldn't see it from different angles. I so could see it. So were there lots of little they, they screens? Were all, yeah, they were all, all individual They were screens? all looking at screens. All individual yeah, ones? Yeah, oh, yeah. wow. Tiny, wow. like um, probably. <laughs> they weren't even physical things because no. you couldn't see them from up there. And I couldn't see them Almost from... Almost like a holographic... Could it be like a hologram, yeah? yeah. Could mm -hmm. you see it? And um, I, looked, I looked at the screen over this lady's shoulder and um, the image, they were all being shown images. I don't know if they were all the same, but um, the one I saw was just um, beautiful pictures of the earth, you know, the sea, fish jumping up and lovely mountains and things like that. And it just sort of like a black, just went across the screen and it changed to just a horrible, horrible, horrible sight. I'll never forget it as long as I live. It was like um, it was like this black, gungy stuff come up out of the ground, and it wasn't like uh, like oil. Or it was like like an oil, like oil, but yeah. like quicksand as well in oh, a way, right. and horrible stuff. And it just it covered like everything was covered in it, 
and it covered the even sea. It was like the fish, everything was dead. I could see all dead things. I could see legs sticking up out of this mm. thing, like hooves, you know, like some mm. animals with hooves. Kind of and black fluid intelligent energy? No, it was actual energy. physical. It was like the earth had like been... Like the, the movie The Blow? No, this was, um, this was like, um, it was like, you know, when you, you get a, uh, a volcano and it just covers everything and it's all like flowing and everywhere. So it was just but it was black. The, the earth was being yeah, consumed. Black. It was coming up, yeah, it was coming up. Like out, oil. Yeah, it was coming up out of the earth and it seemed to have killed everything as far as I was could see. Was dream or the abduction? No, this was on, on when I, what I saw on the ship, what these people were looking at on the screen. So this was the small screen, yeah. this lady were who's... black entities, tendrilic life forms, anything that lived or um, sea creature type stuff? No, I didn't see anything like that. It just looked like there was horrible black sludge that had killed everything on Earth. All the plants were dead and animals were dead and fish were dead. and So it was like it was just everything went grey and black and all the beauty was gone, you know, the sun was gone and the trees were gone and things like that. It was just horrible. Did that? I didn't see it coming. It was already there, but it was like, you it was know, bubbling, plopping, up. bubbling up and it seemed yeah. to be coming out of the earth and it covered, covered everything that I could see in front of me. And, and, and um, was there anything else after that that you saw on the screen that you remember? Well, that's all I remember saying. And yeah. then they, I heard the voice saying, you can ask your second question. And I said, um, well, what's happening with all these people? What are they doing here? And the answer was, they're being categorised. And that's all it said, they're being categorised. Za razliku od mnogih drugih svjedoka, gdje bi izjave o ovakvim događajima završavale sa više pitanja nego odgovora, kod Marika Jali je sve jasno. Detaljan opis crne mase koja prekriva planet i uništava sav život na ovom planetu, nakon čega dolazi do očitog plana ponovog naseljavanja planeta sa novim vrstama biljaka, ali i ljudi. Ljudi koji su prema njezini riječima kategorizirani. Mislim, što znači uopće ova riječ? Kategorizirani. Kategorizirani za što? I su li ovi ljudi koje je vidjela Marika Jali ti isti ljudi koji svake godine misterio zanestaju po čitavom planetu? Nadajmo se da ne, iako je ovo sve naravno pretpostavka što bi bilo kad bi bilo ako ova žena govori istim. Jer ova žena možda nije niti svjesna, ali ona u suštini govori o kraju svijeta. Kraju naše civilizacije, početku potpuno nove civilizacije koja će očito biti postavljena na naše mjesto. Mnogi ljudi vjeruju da je naša civilizacija samo nastavak prošle civilizacije koja je također bila uništena. Ciklusi o kojima smo nedavno govorili. Vanzemaljski eksperiment koji očito ne daje rezultate koji se očekuju od nas. I cijela ova današnja priča od Marika Jali me asocirala na jednu izjavu od Bob Lazara, kojeg ne moram posebno predstavljati. Ako još uvijek ne znate tko je ovaj čovjek, ostavit ću vam sve linkove na videa kojem sam govorio o njemu, ali ono što nisam nikad spomenuo je ovo. Prilikom njegovog zaposlenja u bazi 51, točnije područje u sklopu baze 51 po imenu S4, na jednom od prvih briefinga u poslu s kojim se treba baviti, a bilo je riječ o radu na obrnutom inženjeringu vanzemaljske letjelice njezinog antigravitacijskog pogona, dobio je dokument na uvid, to jest kratki priručnik sa kratkim crticama o našoj povijesti i načinu na koji je čovjek nastao. Ono što mu je bilo čudno je bilo to da je tekst bio napisan na način kao da ga nije napisao čovjek, nego neko potpuno drugi, netko koji je proučavao naš planet i ljudska bića o kojem je stajalo, da je sam čovjek nastao kao genetski eksperiment vanzemaljske bića prije više stotina tisuća godina. Gročitav taj period dogodilo se još 65 većih genetski korekcija, to jest ispravki, kroz našu povijest. A sad ono najzanimljivije što možda povezuje današnju priču od Marika Jali. U tekstu koji je čitao Bob Lazar, svaki put kada bi kontekst teksta ukazivao na čovjeka, to jest ljudsko biće, tekstu ne bi pisalo čovjek, nego containers, što u prijevodu s engleskog jezika znači spremnik ili kontejner. Nigdje se u tekstu nije spominjao čovjek, nego spremnici. Bića koja su stajala iz ovog teksta su nas nazivala spremnicima. Postavlja se naravno ogromno pitanje i misterija. Spremnici za što? Također i ljudi koji su u slučaju Marika Jali kategorizirani. Kategorizirani za što? Ovdje možemo skakati iz teorije u teoriju, jer Bob Lazar nije imao objašnjenja za ono što je vidio, niti je ponudio objašnjenje, jer ni sam nije znao što to znači. Govori o onome samo što je vidio i čuo. Dodatna pojašnjenja nije dobio. Osobno priče i svjedočanstva poput ovog današnjeg koliko god nevjerojatno zvučale, ne odbacuje. Istina je da u ovom svijetu ovakvi se doka sigurno postoje veliki broj prevaranata, ali isto tako sam siguran da određeni broj ljudi sigurno govore istinu. 
U slučaju Marika Jali, zaključak ostaje u potpunosti na vama, jer jednostavno to je takav tip svjedoka koji teško osim svoje priče može ponuditi nekakve vrste čvrstih i materijalnih dokaza. I kada bi samo znali koliko sam osobno dobio mailova naših domaćih ljudi iz svih država bivše Jugoslavije koji tvrdi da su imali fantastične iskustva, dio tih mailova je ponekad dosta neozbiljan, ali na svakih deset priča dolazi jedna koja je izuzetno zanimljiva, napisana od strane ljudi koji hrabro stavljuju svoje puno ime i prezime, ali nisu spremni javno govoriti o tome i to u potpunosti razumiju. Pokušajte samo ispričati ovakvu priču poput današnje nekome tko ne zna ništa o ovakvim stvarima. Prvo će reći da je žena luda, a onda će reći da ste i vi ludi kada glate takve gluposti. To je nažalost tako, ali vi ja znamo bolje. Iz ovakvih svjedočanstva se ponekad krije prava i potpuna istina. Hvala svi na gledanju i baš me zanima vaše mišljenje, to jest vjerujete li vi ovoj ženi? I ako da, koja je vaša teorija, o čemu to ona točno priča? Nova zemlja i kategorizacija ljudi. Jako zanimljiva tema izjava jer ovo nije prvi put da jedan svjedok govori ovakvim temama. I uskoro ćemo ovu temu proširiti na neočekivana područja. I ne zaboravite, vi ste na Balkanju i Fokanalu, mjestu gdje istina ponekad zvuči čudni od fikcije. Vidimo se uskoro opet. Lijep pozdrav. So far, we have seen what damages we have inflicted on our planet in terms of global warming. Most climatologists agree that the world is passing uh, through a very critical moment, and even the Archbishop of Canterbury has warned us of environmental doomsday. But it's not only scientists and theologians, but also non-human species who appear to be greatly concerned about the survivability of human species. Let me go back to the question of abduction and ask to what extent does the abduction phenomenon entail environmental element? I looked at a number of abduction cases which had implications for environmental crisis, and according to the degree uh, of its relevance, I have categorized them into two types. One, the observer communicative type, and two, the participatory instructive type. type. Let me explain the main features of these two types. The first one is the observer communicative type. This one involves communication about the present or future condition of the planet, and the main purpose on the part of aliens appears to be to communicate about impending critical condition of the Earth, and yet, without specifically mentioning what the danger involves, uh, what causes it, or what to do about it. Abductees are shown various images of the Earth in holograms or on flat screen monitors. They see trees lay fallen on barren lands, forests are totally devastated, bodies of animals and humans are strewn about, or strange chemical and industrial materials cover the Earth's surface. Just to show one example, let me play a video clip of an Amarshi experience, Amari Keale. Is Mari here today? Oh, you are there. Oh. You'll be here in a minute. <laughs> I met Mari last December uh, in London, a much meeting, but I will use uh, interview material done by Joanne because it, it has a clearer voice and the recording quality is much better than mine and the, the contents is exactly the same. What are aliens doing here? One feature that stands out is educating abductees about the damages done to the Earth. The image of the damage to the Earth is shown not only, not only to individuals, but also to a group of people, sometimes to a group of hundreds, many hundreds, in a setting of large uh, visual uh, 
something like a computer workshop. The other feature is that aliens are doing this without instructive messages specifically related to the images being shown. They just let the abductees see the image and leave what to make out of it just to the abductees themselves. The second type, there are some more things to talk about type one, but I'll just skip over to second type, which is the participatory instructive type. Here, aliens specifically direct the abductees' attention to environmental problems. They mention clearly a possible catastrophe or directly involve the abductees in the process of educating others. The abduction of Linda Cotill is a case in point. When Cotill was abducted in November um, 1986 near Brooklyn Bridge in New York, there are one world-renowned politician and his two uh, security guards uh, who happened to be watching this incident uh, from a very close distance. On that night, they discovered Cotill in a nearby river beach. She approached them holding a dead fish in her hand and said, see what you have done to this fish. Small aliens were standing beside her uh, when this happened, and if you closely look at the record, then it will become very clear that she was talking to the, these men on the alien's behalf. Basically, the alien's message here uh, is quite straightforward. The aliens were protesting about uh, the harms down to the waters of the earth where pollution could no longer support life. Statistics of the two types shows that there are relatively fewer incidents in the second category, but they have greater significance or they have a greater degree of clarity in terms of the message transmitted. Here, aliens specifically mention the danger associated with the environmental deterioration, and they seem to be doing so without any, any strings, if you like. One of the most important cases uh, belonging to this category is the incident at Ariel Primary School in the village of Ruwa in Zimbabwe. I'm sure you, you have seen that this is a very famous case, so uh, many of you have already seen this video clip. On 15 or 14 September 1994, 62 children of this school uh, saw an alien spaceship landing near to their school uh, ground. Two aliens were seen standing on the spaceship or hovering of, uh, above it, and one of the children got a kind of telepathic message uh, from the aliens. And this is uh, from John Mack's interview with the girl. Uh, and I'll just shortly play it here, about two minutes. What I thought was maybe the world's going to end. Maybe they're telling us the world's going to end. Um, well, why do you think they might want us to be scared? Because um, you, maybe because we never, we don't look after the planet, um, the area properly. Mm -hmm. And uh, really, this is—is is this an idea that uh, you have had before that we don't look after the planet properly in the air, or did this idea come to you when you had this experience? And I had this experience. Mm -hmm. And how did that idea come to you from this experience? This is a little hard, but try, try to be with me here, okay? When you, how did this idea come to you when you had this experience? I just felt all horrible inside. You felt horrible. At what point did you feel that? When you saw the craft or at, when you got home at night? Or when I got home. You had that horrible feeling when you got home? Yes. And say more about that horrible feeling, Lisa. What was it like? It was like in the world, all the trees would just go down and, and there would be no air and people would be dying. Mm -hmm. And those thoughts came to you, had you had those thoughts before this experience? No. No. And did, 
how did those thoughts come to you? Did they come to you from the craft or from... From the man. The man. And the man, did the man say those things to you? Uh, how did he get that across to you? Well, he never said anything. It's just that the face is the eyes. What was the sense you got from those eyes? He was interested. The girl here is, is saying maybe the world is going to end because we um, don't look after the planet and the air properly. All, trees, all the trees go down and there will be no air. People will be dying. I tend to take this incident rather seriously. The reported incident has the least element of a hoax, and the aliens do not seem to have any ulterior motive in turning up to the school children and communicating to them. The message is quite clear. Without anything cryptic or symbolic codified in, uh, literally is about uh, the impending collapse of the Earth's ecological system. What scientists did uh, in many pages of numbers and diagrams, the aliens did in a few words. Basically, they are saying your race, together with other life forms, could perish with the evaporation of breathable air as a result of your carelessness. I said abductions belong to either category one or category two, depending on the degree that the way that aliens convey environmentally significant messages. But what about the cases which appear to have no environmentally significant elements? These cases carry all the marks typical to alien abduction, and yet devoid of any ecologically significant episodes. And since this category constitutes another big portion of abduction reports, perhaps some might argue that environmental crisis is not really on aliens' agenda. But there is a caveat in saying this, however. It is highly possible that some talks about the physical condition of the planet occurred during abduction, but only the memory was lost. This could be either due to deliberate suppression of the memory by aliens, or perhaps the abductee's inability to overcome traumatic uh, uh, experience and the consequence suppression of the whole uh, abduction process. In fact, some abductees recall ecologically significant episodes at a much later stage in their life. Um, in addition, even if they don't have any conscious memory, many abductees subsequently become acutely interested in environmental issues and sometimes they actively participate in environmental protection movements. So undoubtedly it is uh, in the first and second categories cases that aliens show more environmental specific concerns, and yet we cannot exclude the possibility that even the cases apparently without any direct relevance uh, could in fact entail environmental elements. I have tried to present a, cases, a case for a positive relationship between abduction and hybrid project, uh, environmental crisis, but what about the hybrid project? If the hybrid project is integral and central to abduction cases, then, well, as David Jacobs and uh, Bob Hawkins argue, and I agree with them, there must be also positive relationship between uh, hybrid project and um, environmental crisis. It may be more or less assumed that the hybrid project is a response to this impending demise of human civilization. What we do not know at this stage is precisely how the, pre uh, the project is a response to this crisis. Or perhaps aliens will never tell us and will never know about it. What they have said so far are only three short sentences. This is important. We must do it. We have the right to do so. 
whatever we assume to be the alien's intention is bound to be only speculative at this stage. But for the sake of setting a stage for further talks, let me exercise a little bit of this speculation. As to the way the production of hybrids can be a response to the impending demise of the human race, there are three possibilities. Um, one of them, the first is that they are producing hybrids as a seed species that will be or are already being relocated to another planet or to another world. Underlying the scenario is an assumption that in the end we all die and the Earth will be deserted forever. This scenario can answer the often raised question, where are all the hybrids produced so far? The answer, according to this scenario, is that aliens have transported them to another star or to another dimension where they can and are assimilating and flourishing. One drawback of this scenario, however, is that although environmental crisis may inflict serious damage to the life-supporting capacity of the Earth, the planet may still retain some ability to rejuvenate itself after a certain period of desertification. It may be able to become a beautiful planet again where life can prosper and evolve to an advanced stage. And perhaps the catastrophe may wipe out the present human species and other advanced uh, evolved animals, but surely it may not be able to eradicate all life forms uh, on the Earth. Um, this leads to the second scenario. Hybrids will become a new species which will gradually replace the human species while offering solution to the present problem. Uh, this scenario obviously brings David, David Jacobs' hypothesis, but the only difference is, in this case, the intervention is uh, of a benign kind. Um, hybrids will adapt, adapt to human society, visibly or invisibly, and devise, to, devise ways to solve the present environmental problem. The process of solution will include setting of technological innovation, exercising political leadership, and restructuring the global economic and financial system. Yet, uh, this, well, this scenario has merit in that hybrids, as I said at the beginning, uh, they can easily hide themselves uh, among us, so they can do something for the good of ours uh, secretly, and they look quite similar to us. However, uh, if uh, this scenario is to be true, given the pace of uh, global warming that is maximally stretching the self-sustaining capacity of the Earth, around by now there must be visible influence, influence of these hybrids on major processes of world economy and politics. However, we do not have any signs whatsoever such uh, development yet. No distinctive group of strange humans, strange humans so far uh, have been identified who possess very special intellect and distinctly future-oriented political vision together with financial power large enough to stop the climate change. In fact, what we are seeing at the moment is the world is actually moving towards the very opposite direction. So this scenario has its own limitation. The last scenario is we are, uh, or aliens are producing hybrids as a new species that will repopulate the Earth, but only after the Earth is left deserted for a certain period of time. The hybrids will be brought down to the Earth again when the Earth ecosystem regains ability to support advanced life again. And this scenario improves on the drawbacks of the previous two scenarios but it is not without its own weakness. According to James Hansen, again, it takes 10 years for atmospheric methane to turn into CO2, and about one third of a carbon dioxide emission remains in the atmosphere after 100 years, and one quarter still remain after 500 years. So therefore, it will take 
several hundred years or even several thousand years until the uh, Earth ecosystem becomes clean again after the extinction of advanced life forms. But do the hybrids have such a long life expectancy? And where will they be staying while all these things are taking place on the Earth? Uh, spaceships look quite small, and I don't think they will be happy to stay there bumping into each other for an extended period of time. But there are solutions to these problems. While the Earth remains unable to support life, the hybrids can be relocated to another planet and proliferate there. Regardless of their life expectancy, they can maintain a sizable population through reproduction until the time is ripe on the Earth. Moreover, they have half-human genes, so what would all the genetic engineering have been about if they are not meant to come back to the Earth? So the third scenario has answers to all these questions. The real weakness is this. Why will they go through the hassle of remigration to the Earth when they have happily settled in their own world? I accept that this, is, this protest is quite reasonable, and it sounds all the more so, given that they have half human, sorry, alien genes that undoubtedly will assist them to assimilate to a different planetary environment. We have a very little hint about aliens' intention, and these three scenarios are equally all plausible, or for the same reason, equally implausible. Um, whichever scenarios uh, you might prefer, uh, they have all one common assumption, the impending demise of human civilization. 